The first type of polymorphism we want to discuss is called inclusion polymorphism. And this is something that you get through a language feature called inheritance, which provides a number of things, including subtyping. So let's talk about this idea of subtyping a little bit. It's the subtyping that really provides the inclusion polymorphism. So it is actually very common for us as humans to think of one thing as being a subtype of, of another. We break things into categories a lot. And so, for example, there's a very broad category called animals. And there are many different types of animals. So we can say there are fish and reptiles, amphibians, birds, mammals. And each one of these can be broken down into other subtypes. If you're actually a biology major, you would not use these terms for them a lot of times. You'd actually use the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species type of breakdown. And that forms a hierarchy of different subtypes. So, for example, here we, I've drawn, there are some subtypes of mammal, and then one of the subtypes is primate, and I've drawn some different subtypes of, of primate. This is a simplified UML uh, diagram where the only thing I put inside of the class boxes is the name of the classes. And then you'll see these little arrows here with the open arrowheads. Those indicate inheritance in, um, in a UML class diagram. And it's important to note that the subtype points to the supertype. And the reason that's significant is because in order for this to really be what's called a universal form of polymorphism, one that works with an infinite number of types, you have to be able to arbitrarily create a new one. And so the direction of this arrow indicates the fact that reptile knows about animal, but animal doesn't generally know about reptile and should not. Because if animal knew about reptile, then when I want to go add something else down here, maybe I added donkey under mammal, well, then we'd have this problem that I'd have to change the supertype. I don't want to have to change supertype. The supertype should just work as written, and I can keep adding more and more subtypes, and everything works well. Okay. Now, to take this a little bit into why we want to do this in code, I'm going to switch to another example, the example of fruit. So here's a similar simplified UML class diagram where I say that we have a type called fruit and then I've produced some different fruit down below it. Once again, there's a very simplified version. All it does is it shows the class names. I want to be able to write some code and we're just going to assume that we have some fruit types. I might actually have to put in some fruit types to get this so it, it compiles. Um, Here's a, a more elaborate class diagram where I've added in descriptions for a few methods. So for every fruit, we can ask if you can eat the skin. Uh, we can ask basically how much liquid the fruit contains. So some fruit like banana are fairly dry. Uh, other fruits like apples can have a, a lot of liquid in them. Um, we can call a method called peel which gives us back the skin of the fruit, and then we can slice the fruit into smaller pieces. Okay, so I want to use that, and you'll see that in the subtypes here, we've overridden some of them. So they all have a fractional liquid content. Uh, some of them I've said, for example, a banana is going to have a different version of can eat skin. I'm kind of assuming this one says true. Well, you can eat the skin of the apple, the cherry, and the strawberry but the banana needs to do something different, so it needs to give you back false. And then the peeling is is different, as I put in here. We, were, we don't want to care too much about the details. It's kind of a, a made-up example. But we can take this, and we can start writing some code off of it. So I'm actually going to put all of this in a single file, but generally you would actually put every class in its separate file, and that's what we'll we'll see when we start doing real examples. So I'm going to create a file called fruit example. Um, and I guess I could put, let's see. So let's create our class called fruit. And we could probably even, to speed this up, copy that text and then I can just change all of these to defs
and I will have to create a class called skin to make this compile, but I don't actually have to put anything inside of it. So uh, we're going to get a little uh, error here saying that this needs to be abstract. We will talk about what abstract means in a bit. Um, actually, instead of making it abstract, I'll just add kind of dummy implementations here to all of these. There we go. Okay, so now fruit is happy. And the code that I want to write, we'll actually make this an object, is I want to create a method called make breakfast shake. Okay? And the thing is, I want to be able to do this with whatever fruit you happen to have around. I don't want to be specific about the fruit that that we're using here. It should probably actually give you back a breakfast shake, but I'm, we're not going to care about those details too much. Okay, so first off, I need to check, can I eat the skin? Because if I can't, if you can't eat the skin, well then we need to peel the fruit. Okay. Now that we have peeled the fruit, we should stick it in a blender. Now that's going to get unhappy. I can fix that actually probably by making this a, um, hmm, what type would work well. Actually, instead of using a plus equals, I'll make it a list and we'll do a cons equals of our blender at least for now, will be a list of fruit. Oh, it wants other stuff. Never mind. <laughs> this is just going to be broken for a little bit. Um, and I've added fruit to my blender. I want to add some juice to my blender. And then I actually go through and I'm going to say, well, if there's, if the fruit that we're using has a low fractional liquid content, so let's say it's less than 0.3, so if less than 30% of the fruit is liquid, I'm probably going to need to add additional juice. And then we'll add some ice. And then we'll blend it. Clearly this code is unhappy, seeing as how I don't have anything for a blender, I don't have juice, I don't have ice. But the key point here for our um, understanding inheritance is the fact that I pass in a fruit here. And so I should be able to call this, I should be able to say, make breakfast shake with a new banana. If I have a banana that's a subtype of fruit, I should be able to do it with a new apple. I should be able to do it with any type of fruit. So any of the things that we have in our inheritance hierarchy, I should be able to call the make breakfast shake with that. Indeed, I should even be able to say, oh wait, my favorite fruit isn't on this, so I should be able to create another class and then use the same code that I've already written. That's our goal here. Through subtyping, the goal is we should be able to use any subtype of fruit, and we should be able to add new subtypes of fruit, and it should work just as well. So we'll come back and we will explore this in more concrete terms uh, in a few videos.